Well, welcome. It's uh, Sunday evening, the 13th of November. Now, yesterday, we looked at the excess deaths that remain high in the UK, and we were also alarmed to see the extent of excess uh, chronic sickness. The number of people on chronic sickness increased throughout 2020, much more in 2021, and much more again in 2022. And this is against a background of decreasing levels of COVID. So this increased sickness and these increased deaths aren't attributable to the disease of COVID itself. The news on that is good as we go into endemicity. Now, the WHO hasn't really said we're endemic yet. It still says we're in a pandemic. Now, it's kind of understandable because they were very slow to declare a pandemic when we were saying there was a pandemic for quite some weeks beforehand, months beforehand, in fact. Uh, so it's understandable they're going to be a bit slow in saying the pandemic is over, as Mr. Biden said, it is essentially over. But just let's look at some data here. So let's look, actually look, let's look at some graphics first. Um, so this is uh, new cases. Now, all this means really here that the new cases are very low. But testing though, just means they're testing a bit more in, in uh, New Zealand and um, Australia, where cases are slightly higher. But what, of course, what we're concerned about is the number of patients in hospital. And we see that's going down in the UK. Canada is still reasonably high. Um, Ireland, Australia, United States and Netherlands, all with much, much lower decreasing rates. And when you think about high, how high the rates were in the United States, this really is quite uh, quite encouraging to see. Uh, new daily confirmed deaths. Now, this volatility in the UK data is not from the UK data. It's just the way our world in data has in, uh, interpreted it. Just catching up today. But we've got the United Kingdom, Canada, Ireland, the United States, Australia, New Zealand, and Netherlands in that order in terms of uh, excess deaths or rather in terms of new covid uh, related deaths now of course the way these are measured in different countries varies quite a lot so we're not really saying it's an accurate way to compare covid deaths by any means now this is the figure from the united states we do see that covid deaths are down the seven day averages were very high of course during the spikes now down quite nicely but not gone away we're still looking at about 300 ish a day there mostly people with significant comorbidities of course mostly much older people people that would have died um Hope, well, may have lived for some time longer, but wouldn't have necessarily lived for too much longer. The people at risk anyway, but it's not taking anything away from the fact that COVID is still killing more people than we would like. It is still here uh, because it's endemic and this will probably go on for some time, unfortunately. Now, um, this is hospital admissions in the UK. Now we see that they're going down really quite nicely. Um, quite uh, effective reduction there and we'll see that not all of these are uh, as a result of COVID many are with COVID and intensive care hospitalizations remain very low so good news on hospitalizations in the United Kingdom no two ways about that and as we go into the colder weather we need every bed we can get that is for sure now this shows the um proportion of people that are admitted with covid and for covid in hospitals so this this lot here these ones here these are admitted because uh, they have covid primarily uh, these are admitted uh, with covid as incidental findings so it's about 40 percent but in some areas it's quite a lot lower like london for example it's, uh, it's down about 22 percent it's been as low as in london i think so quite a few people being admitted uh, incidentally as we know in fact the majority now being admitted with COVID rather than for COVID. Um, this is due to the increasing immunity in the population, making COVID less severe for most people. And intensive care, we see the numbers are really quite low as well. Again, these are people here admitted uh, for COVID. The mass, vast majority in intensive care are just admitted with COVID uh, as a as an incidental finding now these are the proportion of death certificates where covid was uh where, where covid uh, death was due to covid and these are the comorbidities that we've looked at now age is the main factor of course uh, 
Um, but also another significant factor is obesity. People with obesity are, are more than twice as likely to die than th th their uh, peers, essentially, um, people of the same age and other comorbidities who don't have uh, obesity. So obesity is a big factor. But these are other ones identified by the Office of National Statistics. Now, these are ill-defined conditions, so that's kind of the collector one. But chronic lower respiratory, urinary, dementia and Alzheimer's, diabetes, and then these heart diseases, heart failure, ischemic heart disease, hypertension, cardiac arrhythmias, car uh, cerebrovascular disease. And interesting that deaths from these are up overall. There's an increase in deaths from cardiovascular disease, as we've noted, but not COVID-related cardiovascular disease. We still need to identify really quite precisely why more people are dying of heart disease uh, compared to previous years. Um, but that's the excess, uh, that, that's the uh, comorbidities and uh, still a few people, not many, so about 12% there, 13% uh, people dying of COVID who have no pre-existing comorbidities, but thankfully the numbers there are quite low. And of course, remember, these are percentages. Now, this is really particularly interesting. Let's look at the graphic here. These are excess deaths by place of death. Now, we notice here that pe more people are dying at home and more people are dying basically other places like work and in the street um, or in social activities. But less people are dying in establishments, community establishments, care homes, hospital or hospice. So more people are dying out of hospital. Now, the ONS don't say this, but that indicates that more people are dying to me acutely if people are dying at home. Because if someone's very sick, obviously they'd want to be hospitalised. Whereas if they die all of a sudden, there's no time to be hospitalised. Now, we need a bit more data on this, but this is what the ONS has given us so far. So um, a lot more people dying at home and at work and in the street and other places, less dying in hospital hospices and official care facilities and why there's not more interest in this i really don't know now i was looking for um information about excess disease in the united states we, we know that there's an increase in long-term sickness in the uk the united states is a bit harder to find so this is from the uh, from the site uh, from the cdc website and it surprised me, actually, six in 10 adults have a chronic disease in the in the United States, really quite high, not a very healthy country at all. Four in 10 have two leading causes, as we know, heart disease, cancer, chronic lung disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, diabetes and kidney disease. Um, but this site did not have trends. What I really want to know are are more people developing long term illness in the States. We know a lot already have it. But what is the trend is the data I'm looking for. So give me a hand with that if you can find it. Uh, I couldn't see anything, certainly not on the CDC sites on that. Um, to contribute to causes in the U uh, United States, of course, tobacco use, poor nutrition, lack of physical activity, alcohol and other drug use. Particularly, I think, in the States, poor nutrition is, is a big factor. Nutrition is not particularly good in the States um, in, for, for many, many people. Now, just briefly, um, uh, globally, COVID deaths are down 90%. Uh, this, is, this is a WHO press briefing with Dr. Tedros, uh, former, some might say, current uh, politician, uh, non-clinician academic, but head of the WHO. Uh, 9,400 COVID-linked deaths last week, 90% less than in February, where it had been 75,000. So gratifying reduction in deaths. That is good to see. Now, Dr. Tedros says we've come a long way and this is definitely a cause for optimism. I agree. I agree fully. But we continue to call on all governments, uh, communities and individuals to remain uh, vigilant. OK, I'm not sure what we're remaining vigilant against. For example, we looked at um, Uganda where COVID is essentially part of their past, according to the clinicians we've talked to in Uganda. So whether he wants the, these African countries to remain vigilant uh, is not clear. He seems to be saying that. Almost 10,000 deaths a week is 10,000 too many for a disease that can be prevented and treated. Um, now, 
we're not really allowed to uh, disagree with the WHO too much, but can COVID be present, uh, prevented? Uh, can COVID be treated? Well, the symptoms can be treated effectively. Do we have many causal treatments that we're using? Um, not particularly. Um, seems fairly sweeping statements there. And certainly the prevention, we know that after vaccination, for example, there's huge breakthrough infections, huge numbers. It goes on to say, WHO continues to urge caution and we continue to urge everyone to be fully vaccinated, including getting your next dose if it's due, is the advice from the WHO. Now, I'm just going to share some confidential information about myself here. Um, I keep getting uh, invitations <laughs> to turn up for a uh, 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 booster uh, vaccine uh, dose uh, from my uh, local surgery. Now, I did have a look around what I could see on this. And as far as I can gather, GPs are currently being paid, uh, as far as I can see, it's a £30. That's about 35 40 US dollars uh, per injection to, um, what's the word I'm looking for, to um, incentivize. Uh, now, if I've got that wrong, my, my apologies, uh, but I will share my vaccine status with you here. So that was my first one, February the 18th, 2021, 7th of May. That was a request for a, a visit. And then my third one was 20th of November, 2021. And uh, I haven't had one uh, since... I was getting on for a year now, wasn't it? Because 13th of November today, so my last one was 20th of November. But I do know for a fact I've been exposed to COVID many times. So I'm hopeful I've got mucosal immunity and systemic immunity. And I know I've been exposed to it many, many times and not uh, become symptomatic over the past six to nine months. So, um, of course, what you do is up to you. But that's just some personal information about me i have chosen to reveal to you now uh this is how the who is saying we should prevent covid uh so they're recommending vaccines uh keep a safe distance from other especially in closed spaces okay who is saying that in the uk we're not doing that uh, when indoors open the windows if possible who are recommending that in the uk we're not doing that of course, in the UK, hospitalizations are going down very nicely. Wear a mask uh, if you're around those at high risk of severe illness. Uh, to extent we're doing that in the UK. Keep hands clean. I can't say hand washing is... I think hand washing in the UK has gone back to down to normal. Cover coughs and teasers, of course, because there's lots of colds around. Stay home if you're feeling unwell. And again, that's not government policy to do that. So there's a big mismatch here between what's actually going on in the UK and what the WHO are advising. And yet uh, cases in the UK are going down, hospitalizations are going down and deaths are going down. Um, the WHO uh, seemed not to mention in this briefing the development of natural immunity, which to me is a pity. But anyway, as I say, we can't disagree with them. They're the WHO, but... Uh, We've noticed the inconsistencies with, with inconsistencies with what, with what is actually being done. Uh, Ma Ma Maria uh, van Kirkhoven, one of the senior people, of course, in the WHO, um, sustainable, uh, substantial underestimate of the true circulation. Of course, people aren't testing. We agree completely. Uh, still a pandemic. OK, it's not an endemic yet, according to the WHO. And it's still circulating quite rampantly around the world. That is true. That is true. Uh, but thankfully, less people dying, as we've seen, less people getting sick, as we've seen. Um, immunity is building up around the world, exactly as we've anticipated for some time now. Now, one of the um, illustrations that we can't stop COVID comes from China. But they, they had the zero COVID policy, but they are shortening the quarantine times for inbound travellers and close contacts uh, from seven days down to five, which is encouraging. Uh, the stopping secondary contacts so people that have had the infection who contacted someone who that they were putting those into uh into quarantine as well really quite excessive um and it looks like they're going to incrementally ease things but they're saying not but of course the chinese can't say they are because they don't want to lose face 
Uh, they say they're optimising and adjusting prevention and control measures, not lying flat. In other words, not letting it rip, as we have done in the UK, essentially. Well, as we have done. Um, number of cases building up 10,500. Um, it can't be stopped. We have to build up uh, natural community immunity. And the Chinese are still denying that obvious reality. Which is strange. Now, I, I, I like to just point out um, a, a few uh, I irregularities and inconsistencies. So, so, so I've actually got one here, um, which is quite uh, interesting. Um, ONS release data on the 2nd of November. Census day, March uh, 21, 2021. The size of the usual resident population of England and Wales was uh, 59 million and a half. Um, and that was the breakdown, so 56 million people in uh, England. 56 million people, uh, 56 million and a half people in England. Now, NHS Digital, um, uh, they say that there's 62,000, 62 million people registered with the GP practice in England as of the 1st of November 2022. So, to be fair, NHS Digital are only about 5.5 million out, so that's like... Uh, yeah, five and a half million out. So, so 26, uh, 27. Yeah, it's about five and a half million, isn't it? So the population is 56 million. Okay, it could have gone up a little bit in that time, but not that many by any means. 56 million and a half people in the UK. Uh, 62 million. Uh, 56, sorry, 56 million living in the UK. So living in England, get it right, John. 56 million living in England. 62 million um, registered with the GP. And we know that there's several million people in England not registered with the GP. So if we want to know um, how many people are registered with GPs in England, we can see that it's more than the total population. Th this is just absurd. Um, how are we supposed to trust figures from the uh, NHS Digital and Security Agency if they're going to get at least five and a half million out? Not impressive. Not impressive at all. And uh, just one of those absurdities you keep finding. So there you go. You can believe official data or you can believe official data. <laughs> but it, it, the, the Office for National Statistics uh, is, is the correct one there. Um, NHS Digital are like way out. And why is, the, is that deliberate? I mean, it's a heck of a mistake to make if it's, you know, what, 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 um, of course, they wouldn't lie about it, would they? But, but, but um, yeah, inexplicable. And uh, it's just one of those mischievous things I like talking out. I didn't discover it, of course, the great uh, English academic, um, uh, Norman Fenton. I identified that and I uh, pinched it off his Twitter site. So there we go. Uh, absurdities that need to be clarified. But this is important because we do have a crisis of trust and we need to get these things right. So there you go. A um, few things going on at the moment. Uh, deaths down. Good. Um, cases still rampant but basically not being detected but not resulting in hospitalizations not resulting in death the 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 severity of covid is going down and um, i'm hopeful that soon we'll be able to be talking about lots of other things uh, other than covid because there's plenty of other health things to talk about so for now thank you for watching <laughs>